Uh, okay. So, <clears throat> we'll just go over this. Although I give you a lecture already, but we'll just have to repeat it. So that you can also download this uh, presentation. Okay. <clears throat> All right. So here's some st statistics of the life expectancy in the US. So in the 1900s, life expectancy there was around 50 years. 1955, 55 years after, it came, came out to be almost 69. And then uh, 40 years after, it went up to 72. Uh, for males and for females, 79. It seems that the females have a longer lifespan than the males. Of course, that is understandable. The males undergo so much stresses. And you know what is stress? Stress really can lower your lifespan. So here is the projection, the probability that they have forecasted. In the 1950s, when you reach 65 years old, there is a possibility of 7% becoming 90 years old. And 40 years after, it went up to 25%. Those people who are at 65 reaching the GMT. Okay. So you can see the difference here now that uh, uh, people are, you know, reaching uh, or having a longer life expectancy. <clears throat> uh, could this be due to improved diet, improved health care, uh, improve uh, aside from diet supplementation, and eradication of some diseases or our ability to treat diseases. Huh? So, so there's a prediction that the year 2050, we are here now in year 2021, so, it says the number of centenarians would number in millions already. No? <clears throat> okay. So, here are some facts. Uh, what happened if we age? After the age of maturity, which is 25 to 30 years, the body begins to deteriorate at a rate of 0.7% a year. Also, there is a deterioration of 0.7. Okay. 
and this has been shown by just uh, having, uh, you know, weighing the uh, the brain, comparing the uh, brain of, of people who have died at about 70 years old, comparing it to uh, people who died uh, around 25 to 30 years old. So the 25 to 30 years old, the brain is around 1,500 grams or one and a half kilo. And they found out that at age 70, one third is no longer there. So that means one third of 1,500, that's uh, five period of 500, and you're left, you're left with 1,000 grams. So it's not only the brain, but also all the other organs are affected by this deterioration, by this slow process. No, it's slow. When you remain healthy, I mean, you do not uh, abuse yourself, drinking alcohol, smoking, not sleeping, not sleeping well, and other abuses to the body. So there's just only a slow process of deterioration. But all of the organs are, of course, affected. Right. Dr. Michael West, a molecular biologist, University of Texas, Southwestern Medical Center in Dallas, discovered that two mortality genes, they call it M1 and M2, M for mortality, can speed up aging or reverse aging process depending on whether they are torn off or torn on. Aging cells have the M1 gene in the own position. When Dr. West reversed this and put it on the off position, the aging cells reversed their aging, becoming younger and increasing the number of times they could divide. No? I could, I, I hope they could wire off those genes somewhere in our body. We will have just a switch, switch on, switch off. No? <laughs> uh, well, maybe in the future that could be done. Now, who could ever uh, think about what we are doing now? We're lecturing through the Zoom. It's never been there before, except we have seen it in the movies. Oh. <laughs> but now it's a reality. Everybody's doing it. But before it is just a dream. All right, so we don't know in the future that they can do uh, we can wire this mortality genes to our outside of the body so that we can put it on or off. <laughs> so reversing aging, becoming younger, and increasing the number of times the cells could divide. By turning the M2 gene off, cells appeared to go on agelessly dividing indefinitely, okay? There's a group of cells that we uh, produce every day, but 
these cells, if you have a very good immune system, is destroyed. I am referring to cancer cells. Every day we are producing cancer cells. But our immune system gobble them up and destroy it. The characteristic of these cancer cells, they keep on dividing several times, replacing the old cells. And they can have new cells. Okay. I will talk about that uh, later. Dr. West said in Chicago Tribune, there is no turning back. For the first time in history, we have the power to manipulate aging on a very profound level. He went to speculate that by controlling these genes, life expectancy would eventually extend to 200, 400, or even 500 years old. Who would like to live up to 500 years old? Now living for four or five hundred years old, I might just as well think of because uh, you'll all you'll be your your friends, your loved ones are gone and you are still alive. No, it becomes a lonely life. The new generation does not know you anymore. Who are you? <laughs> ah, okay, now let's go. Dr. Michael Rose, University of California at Irvine, has successfully bred a, stra a strain of fruit flies, Dorosis, Dorospila, no? that is able to live twice as long. The super flies are more robust than their ordinary counterparts. Dr. Robert Tyler found out that these flies are producing a cellular antioxidant. And you know this superoxide, this mutase. A very powerful antioxidant, superoxide dismutase, and abbreviated SOD. Dr. Thomas Johnson, a biologist in the Institute of Behavioral uh, Genetics at the University of Colorado in Boulder, in, discovered that the lifespan of brown worms can be doubled by altering a single gene. So probably this is your M1 and M2 genes, no? similar to your M1 and M2. This was the first successful attempt to successfully increase an animal lifespan. Strikingly, the mutant worms produce elevated levels of superoxide dismutase. And another enzyme, catalase. And if you remember, catalase acts on hydrogen peroxide. No? <clears throat> and are more resistant to an herbicide called paraquat. Paraquat is an herbicide which kills uh, or destroy uh, grass or your herbs that uh, compete with your plants like 
when you're planting corn or you're planting rice, there are so many weeds that uh, would put the nutrients from the soil. So, Monsanto chemicals came up with paraquat, which destroys these weeds. No? And also, not only the weeds are uh, destroyed, some insects are also destroyed. Now, it does not discriminate whether these insects are harmful to the plants or to your harvest, or they are helpful. So, that's it, no? Paraquat produces a generation of superoxide radicals and destroy these herbs as well as some um, uh, insects. Dr. Thomas Masyag of the American Red Cross Jerome Holland Laboratory for the Biosciences discovered that the lifespan of skin cell is doubled by switching of a gene that controls the production of interleukin-1. Uh, these interleukins are can cause inflammatory uh, inflammations. So, uh, and and act on cells, whether the cells are of animal or plant cells. So the technique used by Mashiach to turn off the gene is called antisense. Now antisense is currently used to create ageless tomatoes that stay ripe indefinitely. You know, your tomatoes easily ripe. They stay there for two to three days and they become rotten. So these tomatoes that uh, they were being formed through this technique. The tomatoes stay ripe indefinitely. It will not be rotten. <clears throat> Dr. W. Wright and Dr. J. Shea from the University of Texas Medical Center have found a genetic mechanism that causes cells to die. The researcher discovered a way to deactivate this death mechanism. Cells with deactivated mechanism live indefinitely without aging. So, deactivate this death mechanism, this apoptosis. So, deactivate it and the cells live indefinitely without aging. Now, of course, this is done in, in vitro, in the... Uh, <clears throat> In the laboratory, you know, in the petri dishes, they put the cells and observe them. And they behave like cancer cells. As long as the cancer cells in vitro are being fed or given nutrients, they will continue to live without aging.
The free radical theory of aging is based on the importance of oxygen. Now, this is uh, the free radical theory is the first as well as a prevailing theory of aging. It's because we are dependent on oxygen. And every time we use oxygen, there is always the production of free radicals. So this is the free radical theory of aging based on the importance of oxygen. Dr. Harman is considered the discoverer of the free radical theory of aging. He says, chances are 99% free radicals are the bars of aging. So Dr. Earl Stadman, Chief of Biochemistry Laboratory of National Heart Lung Blood Institute in Bichiba and Marlan agrees that damage from oxygen free radical contributes heavily to accelerating the aging process. Dr. Harman says free radicals are involved in the formation of neurotic plaques. You have, of course, heard of atherosclerotic plaques, which is inside your blood vessel, in the intima. But these neurotic plaques are on the nerves. So this is associated with senile dementia of the Alzheimer type. Okay. So superoxide free radicals are destroyed by SOD. So superoxide free radicals are destroyed by superoxide dismutase, the most powerful antioxidant known to scientists. We all have the genes that produce this SOD. It is called metocella gene. Now, of course, you are familiar with this guy, metocella. You read your uh, Bible, Genesis, Metos, Metosella lived up to 969 years. No, that's in the Bible. You have read, you have read that in the uh, Genesis. <coughs> Person mentioned and then it lives up to 200 years, there are those who live up to 400 years. Now, this metocella is the highest pointer, 969 years, almost 1,000 years. Okay? Some people are blessed with more than one metocella gene, like Helen Brody. A 65-year-old State Department employee has been found to have two of this metocella gene. But uh, she said, don't expect her to live 969, but you have to expect her to live longer than us. From birth up to 25 years of age, our body is producing enough SOD to destroy superoxide free radicals. After that, after 25 years, your SOD production diminishes. But free radical formation still continues. 
because we are using oxygen. So as we get older with less SOD enzyme to protect our cells, the free radicals kill cells faster that they can reproduce. The result is organ shrinking. No? Just like we mentioned the brain, and when you reach 70, one third of your brain tissue is lost already. Well, I am more than 70, so probably I have about uh, one third of my brain has been lost. This could explain why I have what to call brain fog. <laughs> No? Brain fun. Okay. And organ that have shrunk, its function, of course, diminishes. So if it is delivered and the liver do not function as much as it was when you were 25 years old, or your kidney would not be functioning. But you can have seen also this uh, shrinking of your organs. One good example is uh, your indulging in alcohol, which results, of course, to damage to your liver. And so you are trying to uh, have the shrinking of your liver faster than it should. Oh. As well as other, other uh, organs like the kidney also, or the lungs. You try to inhale tobacco smoke now uh, there are diseases which are preventable like diseases of the lungs as a result of pollution that could that could be prevented so do not work on a polluted areas or do not smoke. So you can prevent uh, diseases no, which you suffer later on when you grow older. No? <clears throat> uh, you are familiar with uh, COPD, in which all smokers are going to suffer. But there is a, something that is, until now, they do not know. Smokers who use tobacco only, nothing else raw tobacco and then they roll it and then it just they just smoke it they don't seem to have COPD when they grow old but with cigarettes it is a uh, you are always correct when they say that they will have COPD they will always have Now, we do not know what is in the tobacco leaf that protects the lungs. There might be, could be that there might be some uh, phytochemicals there that protects the lung from, from the effect of smoking raw tobacco, not the cigarettes. The cigarettes 
are already blended so many things that they have added there. It is just uh, like your vape. You're using chemicals. You're smoking chemicals. And we don't know what are those chemicals that are there. And of course, uh, it is flavored so that you will be uh, addicted to it and continue to smoke it. Your vape, no? Okay. So these are things that are or diseases that can be prevented. Now, as we get older with less SOD to protect ourselves, the free radicals kill cells faster that they can produce, reproduce. The result is organ strength and size and its ability to function diminishes. Okay. As the brain reduces in size, you have decreased memory, slower mental response, reduced alertness and diminished ability to handle stress. Livers and kidneys excessively damaged by free radicals can't remove toxins found in the body or produced in the body or taken into the body effectively. The skin wrinkles, eyes develop cataract, joint loss, loses uh, lubrication, bringing pain and stiffness. Pancreas doesn't produce enough digestive enzymes causing indigestion and bowel problems. So as you can see here, there's an illustration of two old folks having a selfie. No? <laughs> okay. Aging of the central control of the body, the brain, causes more health problems than any other area. Norepinephrine, neurotransmitter, is a key compound that maintains primary brain functions. A reduction in this substance usually brings on accelerated aging and depression. What amino acid is a precursor of norepinephrine? Anybody? Allah. Nakalimtan na. Special products of amino acids. That's a chapter on special products of amino acid. Huh? Tyrosine daw. Tyrosine. Okay. So a reduction in this substance usually brings on accelerated aging and depression. So norepinephrine, so tyrosine. Tyrosine can be formed from phenylalanine through Hydroxylation of the phenyl ring. All right. Dr. C. Cohan of the Mount Sinai School of Medicine in New York showed that free radicals quickly destroy norepinephrine. All right. We have a lesser control on the free radicals that they form in our body. But there's plenty of free radicals all around our surroundings. All right. What's your favorite uh, soft drink? Coke? Pepsi po job. You will... Find a big difference 
between coke in bottles and coke in a plastic bottle. Coke in glass bottles and coke in plastic bottles. There's a big difference. Especially if the coke in in uh, plastic bottles is exposed to sunlight. And when they are transported, it's uh, very hot. Especially the snow cover, they transport the uh, <coughs> truck that carries them. And so what happens, your coke contains a very strong phosphoric acid. It is going to remove some elements of your plastic bottle and becomes dissolved in the coke. And these are usually free radicals that will be formed. To minimize that, have your coke in glass bottles. Now, and for that matter, avoid any food that has been put inside a plastic container for a long time. Even if you put it in the refrigerator. Of course, in the refrigerator, the leaching there of the plastic container is reduced, very much reduced. But even then, there is still leaching of that uh, plastic bottle or a plastic uh, container or whatever food that you have especially when the food there is vinegar that is added to it then the leaching is faster you see so these free radicals could be minimized. We know that we form free radicals on our own, but let's not add some more free radicals through the food that we eat or through the air that we breathe. Now, huh? all right. It says here, free radicals quickly destroy norepinephrine and the relationship between norepinephrine and the brain is very important. No? The reduction of norepinephrine usually brings on accelerated aging and depression. See? All right. <clears throat> Is all the other antioxidants try to deter the destruction of norepinephrine? Low Gehrig's disease, of course, when the SOD, superoxide dismutase production in the brain, stops altogether. So in low garage, there is no production of SOD in the brain. And the brain still uses oxygen. So free radical formation will still be there. And there's no more SOD in low Gehrig's disease in the brain. Okay. One of the food products that results in the greatest production of the free radicals in our bodies is polyunsaturated fats. 
this is ironic in the sense that we have been uh, bombarded with commercials and even from our health personnel that saturated fat is bad and you switch to fully unsaturated fats. Huh? Well, there is a truth to that statement, but the fully unsaturated fats are not the type of fats or oil containing a large amount of fully unsaturated fat to be used for cooking. You should remember that if you have double bonds, huh? polyunsaturated meaning many double bonds. Now, once you hit that oil, that double bond is very, very reactive. It cuts the oxygen from the atmosphere. And what do we form? Epoxides. So it says here, this is ironic because millions of people have switched from saturated fats to fully unsaturated fat for cooking, hoping to have lower cholesterol. So they are more afraid of cholesterol than free radicals, which can do damage several times over than cholesterol. Free radicals can increase the formation of cancer cells. Now, which would you like? Cancer or cholesterol? Hypercholesterolemia. You don't want any of the two. But it is much better to have cholesterol because it can be controlled. You see? Animals feed with fully unsaturated fats, you higher free radicals and increase in tumors. While those fed with saturated fats have much lower free radicals and fewer tumors. The fully unsaturated fats are accelerating the aging of their cells. Dr. Hani Dimopoulos, world famous professor at the New York School of Medicine said, if I were to choose between the two, high cholesterol is a lesser evil. <laughs> you see that? Oh, that's coming from Dr. Dimopoulos. High cholesterol is a much lesser evil. Less hazardous of health. Anyone exposed directly to nuclear radiation dies because an incredible amount of free radicals that are created in the body that no amount of SOD in the body or introduced into the body quickly will be able to stop the massive destruction of cells. That's how we die from nuclear radiation. And would you believe that bacteria, a type of bacteria lives inside a nuclear reactor? It is called radiodurans. And there is no living thing on earth that has more Superoxide dismutase in it per grams of body weight of, of, of the bacteria. Obviously, that is why it can survive in the reactor. You see? So the answer is SOD. <clears throat> SOD was discovered by Dr. Erwin Fridovic. 1968 at Duke University. SOD is programmed by mitosali cells. 
Metosela cell, I'm sorry. Metosela cell. No? Metosela. But it cannot be produced unless three nutrients are present. And what are they? Copper, zinc, and manganese. Is OD taken orally is useless since it is destroyed in the stomach. The only way you can increase the level of SOD in your body is to take copper, zinc, and manganese. The same thing when you go, when you have glutathione. Now, all right. Here it says over 90% of the people in North America, and that's the Americans, have a zinc deficiency. Why? Their soil is already deficient in zinc. And so the plants that grow in there, the plants like wheat, corn, fruit trees like apples, does not contain zinc anymore because the soil is depleted with zinc, of zinc. So what would be the best way to get zinc? It should be supplementation with zinc. And do not take zinc that are not organic zinc. So when you say zinc chloride, zinc sulfate, that's not organic. That's inorganic. So what could be the zinc? So you can have zinc malate, zinc citrate, zinc acetate, and that is organic. Or what we call chelated zinc. or chelated manganese or chelated copper. Recently, scientists discovered a substance glutathione, which is a powerful assistant to SOD in fighting radicals. It appears that glutathione joins SOD in the brain in the eyes, in the liver, the kidney, heart, ears, and joints to destroy free radicals. Glutathione appears to be the most important antioxidant enzyme in animals and human cells next to SOD. So still, SOD is number one. Glutathione also appears to be a very powerful anti-tumor agent and an aid in the treatment of allergies, cataracts, diabetes, hypoglycemia, and arthritis, as shown in the studies of Dr. Roger Williams of the University of Texas. Dr. Garrett Grisou of Harvard Medical School says that the study shown that glutathione is intimately related related to the phagocytic activity of lung cells. The phagocytic cells of the lungs gobble up harmful bacteria that are found in the air that we breathe, as well as dust particles and tobacco smoke. Glutathione like SOD should not be taken orally since it will be digested into its component amino acids. To have glutathione, take in glutamic acid, cysteine. Now, by the way, the spilling of cysteine here is wrong. This cysteine is dicysteine. <laughs> That's the one here, no? So cysteine is C-Y-S-T-E-I-N-E, -E. okay? So this is not the dye cysteine. 
and glycine. Cysteine, again, rock spilling, C-Y-S-T-E-I-N-E. Should be supplemented, but it should be acetylated cysteine. Again, T-E-I-N-E. And acetyl cysteine. Still wrong spelling. How do you know cysteine? The primary reason HIV causes AIDS is that HIV depletes all the glutathione in the body, which allows the destruction of the disease fighting cells by free radicals. Anyone with any type of disease, such as diabetes, mellitus, arthritis, heart or artery disease, osteoporosis, asthma, kidney malfunction, lupus allergies, chronic fatigue, and even people who are chronically cranky have low levels of glutathione. So if your boyfriend or girlfriend is cranky, name him, give her glutathione. <laughs> Okay. Now, asthma is very common. No? So this can be helped by glutathione. So do not think of this uh, lupus uh, and all that stuff. No? Allergies is very common. Okay, but sometimes you can have cranky uh, boyfriend or girlfriend. So you gift her with glutathione. <laughs> All right, so we have the aging. You can download that. Uh, we have run it twice already. The first one without the uh, PowerPoint, but this one now that we have. But uh, you see my, my laptop is not functioning well, probably lacks glutathione. <laughs> it just committed suicide earlier. They hung up. Do you have questions? Okay, so I will continue tomorrow. No? We'll have uh, topics to uh, talk about. Okay. Do you have questions? All right. Let's call it a day. Thank you, Doc. Thank you, Doc.